Hi there, my name's Dee and I'm here with Tracy. Hi Tracy. Hi Dee. And we are We Knew the Moon and this is an episode on different types of witches. So excited for this. No, I'm so excited. So I'm going to be covering a little bit of the history of witchcraft, some fun facts about witches, and then I'm going to be going through some of the different types of witches. At the start of this episode, I think it's fair to say that both you and I don't really associate as witches, although maybe other people would call us that. We refer to ourselves as empaths, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. So let's see if that changes by the end of the episode. Okay. Okay. So for many, what we think of as witches were actually just healers, wise women, and their profession got sort of misunderstood. There's a long, long history of people being scared of powerful women, right? So tie that in as well. And all these dynamics of feminism, strong women, fear of women, sexism, etc. They all have a part in this history of witchcraft and witches. And scared of things that perhaps they don't understand, like some exactly. of the things that healers did back then could be seen as quite scary, I'd imagine, if you don't understand how it works, some of the exactly. practices. The way I view magic is that it's science we don't yet understand. Because, you know, even if you went back 100 years and you showed someone like standard mobile phone that we all carry, they would think it was magic, right? They would accuse you of witchcraft. That's how I view it. Like all these things that we can't explain yet, it's because we just don't have the knowledge yet. And that's not to, to reduce their magical values. It's still amazing. You know, I, I think of science as magical. I think it's magical that we can cure cancers and go to the moon and stuff. That's amazing. It's a really nice way of putting yeah. it. Though. Obviously, this is all our opinion. So for me, all these things that we don't understand, we might have an explanation for them one day once we understand more about the universe and atoms and, and connections and all this, that, and the other. The reason why this is relevant is because back in the day when you had these wise women using different herbs to cure this and that. They had an understanding about the power of and the usefulness of these different herbs and plants and so forth that other people just didn't understand or know yet. I'm quite proud of this because the first recorded witch is from Palestine. Really? Same as me. The witch of Endor. So apparently she's in the Bible. But witch hysteria took hold in Europe during the mid-1400s. So this is what we think about with, you know, the witch hunts and Salem witch trials and so forth. I got this from the History Channel website. Single women, widows, and other women on the margins of society were especially targeted. Doesn't that sound familiar? Oh gosh, we wouldn't have had any chance, would we, Day? No. What changed So being accepted to this massive witch hunt? Because when you think of the history of witches, that's the first thing that comes to mind, isn't it? This awful history. The terrible things that were done to women who were suspected to be witches. Between 1500 and 1660, up to 80,000 suspected witches were put to death in Europe. Gosh. That is a lot. And it wasn't nice either, was it, Dee? There's no. horrible stories of how they test for witches. How they test, how they did it, exactly. I will say that I know we've talked about women and wise women and so forth, but some of the suspected witches were male a small percentage, but they were also in danger of being accused of this. It was a very easy way to eliminate a rival, a business rival, a political rival, anyone, a love rival, just accuse them of witchcraft. And at the very least, it will tie them up in the courts for a long period of time. At the very worst, they would be killed for being a witch. The publication of this one book called Malleus Maleficarum Ooh, there's written, a tongue twister. Right? It was written by two uh, German Dominicans, Dominican monks, in 1486. And it is likely to have caused the witch mania and made it go viral. 1486 version of going viral. It translates to the hammer of witches. And it's a guide on how to identify, hunt and interrogate witches. How awful is that? Can you imagine a book coming out at like today on any kind of person leaning, you know, lifestyle, whatever, on how to identify, hunt and interrogate? I mean, what kind of person would write that day? I mean, hashtag issues, right? Right. Exactly. So, I mean, there's definitely some mother issues going on there. Someone had their heart broken. Now, 
we all know about the Salem witch trials, or we've at least heard about the most of us, right? Um, Salem, Massachusetts, it, the year was 1692. And I should say that these witch trials were happening all over the States and again, all over Europe. It began when nine-year-old Elizabeth Paris and 11-year-old Abigail Williams, they began suffering from fits. They were having body contortions. They were having screaming. Today, it's believed that they were poisoned by a fungus. Oh, wow. That caused them to have spasms and delusions. I mean, having very much enjoyed magic mushrooms in the day, um, <laughs> I can tell you they can totally cause delusions, <laughs> in my case, of grandeur. But, yeah. you know, so, so basically they had a bad reaction to some mushrooms they ate. So that sparked fear in people. Of course, they're going to be scared that these two children are having these horrible reactions and and symptoms. So they're looking for answers. More and more young women started exhibiting these symptoms. And so hysteria followed. And three women were accused of witchcraft. So you know how humans have this desire to understand, to know Oh, there must be an answer or a solution, isn't it? That's what we're like. And it's a beautiful thing. Our curiosity is a beautiful thing. But when it's used to try to find an answer and blame people for things, especially incorrectly, it's less than beautiful. The names that we hear quite often are Sarah Good and Sarah Osborne. And there's also Tituba, an enslaved woman owned by Elizabeth Paris, one of the girls, her father. Tituba confessed to being a witch and began accusing others of black magic. Now, again, we have no idea how Tituba was hunted and interrogated. Mm. Confessions extracted under torture, not really going to stand up in court in modern day. So we don't really know whether this is true, whether she actually said it, how she was pressured to saying it. And on June 10th of that year, uh, 1692, Bridget Bishop became the first accused witch to be put to death during the Salem witch trials. And she was hanged. So quite often thought that when witches are burned at the stake, they were in some places, but in the States, they were mainly hanged. Ultimately, around 150 people were accused and 18 were put to death. Six of the people convicted and executed were men. Now, again, you know, I told you the hysteria was the witch hysteria was 1500 to 1660 in Europe. And this Salem witch trial happened in 1692. So the actual the the Salem witch trials and the mass hysteria in the States came after the mass hysteria in Europe. So before Salem witch trials, we we were having this crazy trend of um, accusing people of witchcraft in Europe. And you may be familiar with the slightly less known Pendle witch trial in the UK. Pendle Hill is in Lancashire and 12 people were accused in that area and were charged with the murders of 10 people by use of witchcraft. Of the 11 people who went to trial, nine women and two men, 10 were found guilty and executed by hanging. One was found not guilty. And I dread to think how the trials were because it wasn't just quizzing them, was it? They did horrible tests. Exactly. Like the I drowning mean, test. The dunking, oh, exactly. Yeah, the dunking. Like if she doesn't drown, she's a witch. And if she does drown, well, she's dead, but she's not a witch. It's yeah. like a oh, no Congratulations, you're innocent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I looked for actually like a definition of witchcraft and witches and magic. And again, so varied. One kind of definition was the ability to control the supernatural. But then again, what's supernatural? Is it just, like I said, science that we haven't under- explained yet and we don't understand yet? Talked in other episodes about maybe someday we will be able to have tests about past lives or spirits or twin flames. My definition that I've done as a result of this is a witch is someone who's delighted by magic. Aww. And magic can mean whatever you want, whatever makes you go, oh. Another really, really great definition I liked was using your personal power to create results. That's really nice. That's a good yeah. one, isn't it? Because it's like, I'm going to be proactive. I'm going to use whatever resources I have to try to get the result that I want, which I really like. Again, what is supernatural? Supernatural. One definite um, running theme is a connection with nature. Nature was all they had. Yeah, and you had to be in tune with nature as a matter of survival, didn't you? Yeah. You had to understand the seasons in the year. 
You had to understand what the impact of the moon and the sun was on your crops. You had to know all these things. And all of your essential oils and your plants. and Exactly. You had to know what fungus you could eat. Otherwise, you're going to have these fits and delusions. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> suddenly your whole town is being killed for being a witch. I just want to highlight the fact that there are these positive and negative connotations with magic, witches, and so forth. And that's not even to say different words. Like some words are positive and some words are negative. It's like the word witch. Some people interpret it as positive and some interpret it as negative. Can so I'm I gonna... just tell you, I have this sign in my shop, which I think sums this up perfectly. Mm-hmm. It's a little sign that I sell that says boss witch. It is so interesting to watch the customer's interpretation of this. Because people who aren't maybe witchy or spiritually inclined see a witch as something negative, like, oh, the old witch, you know. Yeah. Um, and so some people go, oh, I'm going to get that for my boss's door or shall we get that for such and such? And you can hear like this evil cackle of like, oh, she's such a witch. And it's like yeah. meant in such a negative way, like this sign should be for such and such's door. And then you get the witches and spiritual people coming in like, oh, I have to have that for my door because yeah. it's so cool. I'm the boss witch. And it's just interpreted in two completely different directions. That's exactly it. When I was a teenager and 20s and a little bit 30s and probably to this day mentally rather than physically because I'm lazier now that I'm older. But during that time, I was a goth and my aunt used to always tell me, you know, when I'm all dressed in black and corsets and long dresses and big eye makeup and stuff. We have to see photos. Oh, I'll show you photos. I got loads. But she always used to say to me, you look like a pagan. In a really negative way. Yeah. And I was like, so I don't give a shit. (laughs) Yeah. So exactly that. I'm going to list you a, a bunch of words. It's really funny. Some of the words that come up when you search for synonyms of witches, it's hilarious. I can't wait to tell you. So Pagan, sorceress, enchantress, pretty expected, right? Necromancer, which is someone who like calls on the spirits and, and of the dead and stuff. A hex, a hag, a crone, Wiccan, which is obviously a branch of witchcraft, more structured religion. Occultist, here's one of the good ones, Pythoness. Pythoness, that right? sounds fancy. And here's where they get hilarious, Harpy. Haridin, termagant, which I had to I had to search the meaning because what the yeah, fuck is a termagant? How do you spell that? I wouldn't even know how to say it. A harsh-tempered or overbearing woman. So, wow. like we said, this use of interchangeable witch bitch, right? Yeah. Um, she devil. <laughs> she devil. And then some nicer ones: empath, healer, spiritualist. Right. Yeah. Or just witch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Some of you might remember that we did a quiz on our website, a survey of our audience. And one of the questions was, how do you identify yourself? And some of the options were pagan, witch, goddess, spiritualist, none of these. So pagan got 5% of a vote, witch got 25%, goddess got 5%, all women are goddesses, spiritualist got 30%, and none of these got 35%. I don't think we had empath on that list. And I wonder how many of our listeners would have chosen that. I went on a little rabbit hole. Another Um, rabbit hole. Found a quote from a lady called Witch Cake at Holly Castle on Twitter. If you call yourself a witch, you are taking on the mantle of hundreds of years of oppression and ostracism. It is your duty to stand besides those who suffer injustice. If you do not, your spirituality is aesthetic only. Wow, that's quite a strong opinion, right? isn't it? Can you be a witch without addressing the history of witchcraft and knowing that your people have had a long history of being oppressed and suffering? Can you ignore that and just play with pretty crystals? Ooh, so I'm not saying I agree or disagree with that. I just think it's a really interesting point. I think that if it deeply affects you of the history, then you know, you're know you taking that title on with all of the history of it but some people some people are young souls we talked about past lives we talk about um how your soul could have been here previously some people are quite new souls and might not feel a connection to what happened previously perhaps the reason I don't identify for which and I have done some soul searching on myself for this 
is because I think I have a really strong connection with something bad that happened in my past to do with being called a witch. When I was in the bath, as I think it was about 10 or 11, I had a really bad sort of regression thing back where the water turned black. I think I've told this story before. You have not told me this story. Have I not? No. I had this really horrible, I don't know if it was a regression, but it was something where I was in the bath, the water turned black, the waves were splashing, and I was sat in the bath and it filled me with this horrible feeling. Oh my God, were you done? I thought being that age, 10 or 11, it was about the time that Titanic was (laughs) come out. So I've always said I drowned in a past life and I'm still adamant I did. And I was on the Titanic because it's the only thing at that age that I could think of where you would drown. But there was without a doubt in my mind that, and the water in my bath wasn't even black, by the way, like the light was on, but I could see it as clear as day and it was cold and it wasn't cold. So there's no doubt that I drowned in some, one of my past lives. But as I've got older now, I own my shop and people bring me spell books. I was tidying my bookshelf the other day and I have so many spell books on there, Dee. None of them I bought myself. I mean, one of the first things I did when I met you was get you self-care for witches. Yes, (laughs) Dee is one of these people that bought me self-care for witches. I had a young couple come in who bought me a book, a witchcraft book. I've had a man serve, who I served a present for Valentine's Day to stop me and say, are you Wiccan? My heckles go up because I think, why are they identifying me as a witch? And I have this feeling that I must not be identified as a witch because people will judge me on it. And as I develop this kind of self-awareness, I think it's something to do with my past. And it's very important that I'm not misunderstood to be a witch. And the idea of having that name, a lot of work on my part is required, I know, is to do with something. that It'd be interesting to put me under hypnotherapy. Yeah, I wonder if you were dunked. That's so terrible. But yeah, yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. I think, I mean, we're preaching to the converted to anyone who's listening to this. But I think researching the history of witches and the witch trials and so forth, Super interesting anyways, especially to women because of just the amount of sexism was involved in it and that level of prejudice and hatred and stuff. We see it today in different ways and it's just a really depressing but very fascinating time in history. So let's lighten the mood a bit because this has all got quite deep, quite heavy, quite intense, right? So for fun... I've compiled a list of celebrities who identify as witches. <gasps> Ooh, oh, I know. Are they surprising? Because I can think of a few. Some of them are. Do, why don't you, can you think of a few? Can you tell me? Oh, what's her name? She's Irish and she's a comedian. And you see, this is bad because I don't know their names. Caitlin Moran. Some of them are actually genuinely quite surprising. Oh. And some of them are not necessarily, they've called themselves a witch, but they do witchy things and they've admitted to doing witchy things. So it's quite fun. Stevie Nicks from Fleetwood Mac is one that a lot of people will associate with witchcraft. She was very open about being very witchy woo woo. Here's a really fun one Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin. Now, he's not exactly called himself a witch, but he bought Bolskin or Bolskine, I'm not entirely sure how to say it, manor in the Loch Ness area in 1970. So he bought this manor, which was the former home of Aleister Crowley. He's the occultist. He's very linked to Satanism. So Jimmy Page admitted he was interested in Eastern and Western esotericism and the Order of the Golden Dawn. Now, I was like, what the fuck is the Order of the Golden Dawn? It's um, a bit culty. It is a bit culty. It's a society which studies the occult. So it's a secret society supposedly set up by the Freemasons for people that specifically have an interest in the occult. Mm. So he had an interest in that. Which brings us on to Kate Bush, again, not so much a surprising one, right? Who was rumored to be a member of this Order of the Golden Dawn. Loads of her lyrics mention very witchy things. A lot of them are supposedly actual rituals and spells. She's got a song called Waking the Witch. (laughs) This one made me laugh. Hillary Clinton has been accused of being a witch. See, accused. Isn't that a funny way of saying it? Like, accusing is, to me, like, Saying, I accuse you of something bad. Exactly. Funny, um, isn't it? Yeah, and it, it, it is 
quite funny because this was when she ran for president against Trump in 2016. Oh, did she cast a spell on him? Yeah, she was rumored to be a witch and used her magic in her political campaigning. So, well, whatever she did to him, he's not quite right, is he? Yeah, well, <laughs> and she's clearly not that good a witch then because she didn't win. So and unfortunately, we had to have four years of Trump. So yeah, so so that one made me laugh that people are still using this as a very serious accusation against people. Beyonce? No. Yes. So she has a drummer who in 2018 accused her not just of witchcraft, but vindictive witchcraft, vindictive claiming witchcraft. that she dabbled in extreme witchcraft, dark magic, <laughs> which is it hilarious. Is. I'm thinking that someone tried it on with her and she didn't want to. And so therefore... See, I'd imagine a lot of these celebrities have to turn into their spirituality in forms of like natural healing for what they have to deal with. Did you find the name of this Irish comedian? Yes, Aisling O'Sullivan, she, or Aisling B. She was in the Netflix series Living With Yourself. She's also like on 8 Out of 10 Cats. She was on Taskmaster. Yeah, she, I don't know how I know this. Maybe I'm just guessing that she is by the way she is. We've definitely both had it where we've met people or seen people and gone, yeah, they're definitely one of us, whatever one of one us might be, right? <laughs> so interesting um, how you just know, though, and that brings me back to the thought of like, is it a thing that you give off a vibe? Is it the way you dress? I, I mean, sometimes to... you can just tell someone is witchy woo woo, right? Like sometimes you can just tell. Um, it might be, but sometimes it's, you know, like their jewelry, right? If I see someone wearing loads of different gemstones, I think she's wearing her crystals, you know? Yeah. Sometimes it's as easy as them having a tattoo that gives it away, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or they're wearing a pentagram necklace and you're yes. like, yep. <laughs> So uh, I, up the, I end up all the cauldron mugs and stuff in my shops. So always a big kind of giveaway that they're witchy inclined. Right. So you want some more celebrities? Yeah. Celebrity Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. <laughs> now you see, I'm rubbish with celebrities. Who are they? Day, tell me. They are the twins that were the baby in Full House, and they're now. I think they have like makeup ranges, and they're just it girls. I don't know and. Oh. They have been quoted talking about their obsession with sage and smudging. So they've said that they smudge everything, they sage everything, they don't want bad energy. So they might not identify as witches, but again, some of these people are just people that practice witchy practices, right? Yeah. This one doesn't surprise me. Lana Del Rey, she was asked in an interview if she put a hex on Donald Trump. <laughs> and she said, yeah, I did it. Why not? Look, I do a lot of shit. Oh, she did. <laughs> now that's naughty. That's really naughty. But also, if you're going to hex anyone, oh. dot, dot, dot. Sybil Shepherd. Do you remember Sybil Shepherd? No. Google ready to try and like. Google quickly. Sybil Shepherd. Um, she had a show ready. called Sybil. You'll recognize her face. She's been in loads of stuff when we were growing up. But she says in a speech, thanks to the great goddess in all her guises, may she bring us peace, joy and righteous anger. Blessed be. Do you know what? Sybil is exactly the American absolutely fabulous. It was a woman and her crazy drunk friend and she had a disapproving daughter. It was amazing. I remember loving it as a child. Oh. But I love this phrase, righteous anger. You know, all our talk about shadow work and looking at it and so forth. You're allowed to be angry. If something is unacceptable, you're allowed to be mad at it, you know? Yeah. So that's my favorite, although you don't know her. <laughs> Adele credits spiritual crystal healing for calming her pre-show nerves. Does she? Yeah. And then here's a fun one. So Priscilla Presley, the wife of Elvis, said that he went through a brief occult phase, whatever that means. A brief occult phase. Oh, my goodness. But the one I want to point out, because I fancy him, is Dave Navarro. You know him from Ink Master fame. Yes. But all of his tattoos, not all of them, but loads of them are spiritual symbols and so forth, aren't they? Right. So um, he's definitely interested in, in that side of things. I thought that was quite fun. Right. So are you ready for the list of the different kinds of witches. Yes. Okay. So I should say that most people who identify as witches will not fall wholly in one category. 
pick a mix, right? Take a bit exactly. from one to another. We and... always say we do what we want. Yeah, I feel like I should just say that, even though I don't, mm. I am so witchy inclined. I'm here holding a crystal. I have cauldron accessories. Like, I know. I mean, I, I totally am. To 100% am, but just don't like the name of it. Okay, so different types of witches. We all, I'm sure, have heard of white witches, white magic, black magic, black witches, right? The black witch, the black magic, is that bad? Well, because one of my friends actually calls herself a black witch with a lot of pride. She actually calls one of my customers to cower in the corner in terror because of the thought, oh, you know, black witch. Well, if you're a black witch, you obviously don't think there's anything wrong with it, (laughs) you know? But black magic is, think of the shadow side of magic. It's where you are, you feel okay influencing others. You feel okay doing harm. It doesn't have to be that extreme as hexing people. It can be just very white witch will not want to, will even, for example, not want to do a love spell on a specific person. No. Because they don't want to influence other people. They might do a a love spell to attract love to themselves in whatever form the universe deems fit, but they would never do a love spell on, you know, I wouldn't do a love spell on you, Tracy, to make you specifically fall in love with me. Very white witch. I wouldn't think of myself as having the right to influence another person. So a black witch is totally cool with that. And they may go so far as putting on curses and hexes and so forth, or they may just feel like it's okay to influence specific people in different ways, not necessarily for harm, but in ways that other witches would find unethical. So I need to stay on her good side. (laughs) Definitely, because she probably wouldn't mind doing a little witchy woo woo stuff to you if you were not on her good side. Then you have what we call grey witches, which are basically probably the most accurate description of most of us. But this is a very simplistic way of looking at it. So let's go a bit further. Now, I found a really good book. It's on Kindle. I got it on Kindle Unlimited. So it was free for me because I have Amazon Prime. So woohoo. So if you have that, check it out. And the book was called What Type of Witch Are You? And it was produced by the White Witch Academy, which is a website and it's got loads of resources as well. So you can go on the website and have a look. And it goes through some of the different types of witches. And I've compiled some others from different places as well. Now, as I read these to you, Tracy, you are going to think, oh, that's me. And then I'm going to read the next one. And you're going to be like, no, no, that's me. And then you're, I'm going to read the next one. And you're going to be like, no, 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 that's me. <laughs> but it's totally cool because, like I said, most people are a little bit of loads of different ones. I say, but they cross over a lot as well yeah. in their practice. I've put them in alphabetical order. Some of them are very self-explanatory, like the first one, which is Art Witch. So, uses art to perform spells, practice divination, honor the elements, and create something that feels magical. These witches love color. Obviously, they're creative. They choose their crystals based on the color rather than the book meaning or whatever. Mm. So, as you can see, I read this and was like, that's us. Because both you and I love being a bit creative with our embroideries and our fabrics and our sewing and so forth, right? Yeah. Exactly. Because when you said art, which I was like, really? But then as soon as you described it, of course. Yeah. Yeah. But then the next one is Astrology Witch. So I was like, no, that's us. In tune with the Zodiac, looks at things like our birth charts, horoscopes, et cetera, et cetera. So I was like, no, that's us. (laughs) Then I read the next one, Ceremonial Witch. And I was like, that's totally not us because we're too lazy for this shit. We don't follow rules, do we? No, we don't like them. I don't, I've said it multiple times. I don't like having to remember things like orders of of doing something or, or mantras. Other people gain comfort from that find that they can express themselves better that way. And that's totally fine, obviously. So then the next one, though, is Chaos Witch. Now, this sounds negative, right? Even when I first read it, I was like, ooh, that's that's probably not a good one. Because, you know. (laughs) Just um, a vision of a cauldron with a witch just throwing stuff around and, like, creating something amazing in chaos. Yeah, that's it. That's 100% it. (laughs) Unconventional methods. So they use unconventional methods make stuff up as they go along based on what feels right for them. The power comes from within themselves. This is you if you use a lot of substitutions for ingredients and tools and stuff. And if you can't define what kind of witch you are, and you like that and you're comfortable with that, then you're probably a chaos witch. 
It's very similar to an eclectic witch, meaning you just take from different types of practices. You do a bit of tarot, but you also do a lot of essential oil stuff and you do lots of, you do a bit of spells here, but not really ritual, you know. So yeah, it was like, no, okay, so now we are three different types of witches, right? Yeah, there's only four on the list and we've ticked three. Three of them, all right. (laughs) So now, number five, cosmic witch. So this is like the astrology witch, but you use the stars and the planets and the moon. So then I was like, okay, well, that's us too. Now we're five fucking different types of witches. (laughs) Then the next one is creature witch. These are people that have a familiar or their self-care practice involves animals. They're animal lovers, basically. So then I was like, yeah, well, that's us too now. (laughs) Oh, dear. (laughs) Just every kind of witch, (laughs) apart from the one that likes rules. (laughs) Then the next one is a crystal witch. So this is someone who practices crystal magic. So someone who will have a huge collection of them, a Reiki practitioner, for example, crystal healers, et cetera, et cetera. The next one I like although it's probably not me, because one thing that you and I have talked about before, Tracy, is that we're, we don't really follow the gods and the goddesses. We don't really have a deity that we follow. No, I think the moon is our thing, isn't it? This Dianic witch, I like because I share the name with it, but it's, I don't really think it's me because they worship the goddess and no men are allowed <laughs> <laughs> oh really this yeah. um see although I don't associate with the word goddess I love to watch the Glastonbury goddesses on their yeah. live feed and the goddess temple in Glastonbury I find it mesmerizing the next type of witch is a divination witch focuses on fortune telling and I was like well that's not me at least that's another one that <laughs> you're but... doing um, a palm reading course though aren't exactly. you exactly And then also, what is it? What do you think you're doing when you're reading horoscopes or doing a tarot reading? You're trying to do a bit of fortune telling. So, like, oh, shit, there's another one on the list. Then I came to Eclectic Witch and I felt a bit better because Eclectic Witch means you make your own rules. You love trying new things, which is definitely us, right? We love researching these new things. It's why we're doing a podcast on all these episodes. And we identify as a few of these different types of witches. So I was like, okay, maybe that's us, Eclectic. Mm. which is a cool word anyway the next one is elemental witch so if you're an elemental witch you probably have an altar where you've got you represent all the elements you focus on these very much when you're doing your spell work or your rituals and stuff fairy witch quite obvious one fairies angels spirits and so forth then we've got green garden forest witch so they're very earthy They love their plants, local environments, gardens, enjoy working with herbs and animals and stuff. So it's like, okay, maybe that a bit. See, that's the one where I'm like, bingo, that's me. I don't know why, because I can't garden. It sits well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, remember, if you call yourself an eclectic witch, you can can tick a few of these and it's it's allowed. Mm. (laughs) The next one is a funny one for me because it's a hedge witch, but it's not like a garden hedge. It's like the hedge between this world and the next. So this is someone who communicates with the spirit world. Mm. It's not me at all. Um, No, we watched a program on mediums the other night and just that whole area is just scary to me. I think it's an expertise that I don't, would w- yeah. I wouldn't want to do. I admire it, but it's not something I'd want to be involved in. And I think it takes a certain type of personality yeah. to not be fearful of that. I don't think that my empathic nature extends to the spirit world. You know what See, I mean? Mine like, does say I'm a spiritual empath, but oh, only yeah, for emotions of spirit. So I can't communicate with spirit, but I can feel if there's a bad spirit or an upset spirit or a bad energy around. Usually yeah. to do with suicides, that seems to follow me a lot, or murder, or if something bad happens somewhere, I have a feeling, that I've lived in a few places where it's just, my auntie had it, she used to say there's bad in the walls here. The next one is interesting, hereditary witch, also known as a blood witch. So this is when you're born into witchcraft. If you know that your parents your are inclined and you've picked up your skills and your talents from them, you can be a hereditary mm-hmm. witch and fall into any of these other categories. So you can be a hereditary fairy witch, for example. Intuitive witch, listen to this, right? Intuitive witch, also known as an energy witch, also known as an empath witch. Oh, 
interesting. So I, I put here in my notes, I read this one in the most detail because this book has several pages on each of the different types of witches. I read this one in the most detail because it's the one that I think best describes Tracy and I. Wow. Highly sensitive, detecting, reading, and absorbing the energy of other people and places. Often need to perform spells or rituals or exercises to protect themselves from other people's energy. That's yeah. like the, the most important thing in my life almost feels like it's doing these. Uh, Half having, the stuff we do is about that. Right? right. From the self-care that we have to do to our visualizations of protecting ourselves with cloaks and bubble wrap, you know, to pointing <laughs> yeah. our crystals outwards at them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So what this book that I mentioned, what type of witch are you? What this book describes these things as is magical barriers. And I wrote, I love this term. Magical barriers. Isn't that cute? So self-care is a cornerstone of this type of witch cares, pra- witchcraft's practice. Moon baths and meditative <gasps> walks. Yes. Right? We might have trinkets to protect ourselves. I mean, surrounded that's a, by crystals. <laughs> I know, right? We have a strong association with water and air energy, can get headaches and feel run down when exposed to large groups or loud, yeah. loud sounds. We recharge by being alone. We can tell when someone is lying. And uh, we feel other people's emotions as if it's our own. Wow, that ticks every box, doesn't it, Jay? Right? When as soon as you said that, I'm thinking all the stuff has that goal. You know, you always have a goal with anything you practice. Like, yeah. why do we do what we do? And most of it is that, isn't it? It's protecting yeah. our emotions. That's yeah. most of what we do that could fall under this witchcraft label is yeah. literally to protect ourselves from other people's fucking feelings. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, in a very roundabout way, fixing others, Yeah, right, I will suggest stones and stuff to fix other people or help people around fix that. horrible. Help other people through their difficult times. But sometimes the motive of that, this is shadow work tapping in, isn't it? It's from an entirely selfish perspective of if you sort yourself out, I will start to feel better. Yeah, exactly. All the other categories of witches, I read them and okay, some of the things could be applied to us and some of them Mm. didn't. The intuitive witch, I read all of them and was like, yeah, that's all us. All of it is us, you know? And I've never heard of that phrase before. So we call ourselves an empath. But is that, is an empath a witch is the question. And according to this book and some people's beliefs, we are witches because we're an empath witch. Yeah. So the next type of witch that came up was a kitchen witch, closely linked to a hearth witch, very closely linked also to the green witch and the garden witch, right? Because it's very much about using herbs and stuff quite often that you've grown yourself or forged yourself. It's very home-based, very so this nurturing. Is you, Dave. This is well, you. yeah. So this was I was like, okay, well, that's a bit me because I'm shit at gardening. I kill everything I try to grow, but I love cooking. I love using herb seasonings so the forth. Best cook of you make amazing cakes and I do love making the cakes and stuff. So I've put here, right, next to kitchen witch, think grandma energy. Oh, really? I don't nice said that's popular. you. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I love grandma energy. Who doesn't just, love grandma energy? Dee's kitchen has been, um, let's say, out of action for quite a while. And it's like you lost a part of yourself when your I kitchen went down. I don't feel whole. I feel yeah. like I've lost a major branch of my self-care. And it's so bad for Dee. She had to move out of her house into like her office space because it was just so emotionally traumatic. You even see my kitchen like that. Yeah. yeah. And and it's so weird how badly it affected me because I'm like, oh my God, how do I show people love if I can't bake them a cake? And, you know, I was, it threw me. So, um, so yeah, I, I probably definitely have some of this in here. But then the next kind of witch, so f- I read intuitive witch and I'm like, right, well, I figured us out. We're this. Then the next kind of witch is a lunar witch. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Which is specifically someone who focuses on what the moon is up to and feels very affected by it and very drawn to it. So I was like, well, fuck, that's us too. One of the characteristics of being a lunar witch is being intuitive, which I think we are by Mm. nature of being an empath. I found this interesting, that when we do tarot reading or any kind of divination, it's most accurate around a full moon. So I'm now doing all my tarot readings around the full moon. Really? And one of the characteristics is that we drink lots of water. Or wine. (laughs) <laughs> Does oh, it say wine, Dee? No, well, I was going to say that we may take our liquids in other forms, but <laughs> I think that's definitely true. 
every time I come into the shop, you offer me a bottle of water. <laughs> We've got pagans and new pagans. So they're very much around god- goddess worship. So these are people, pagans, new pagans that worship the goddess, very closely attached to nature and so forth. This is one I liked. Practical Witch, which always makes me think of the amazing film Practical Magic. Have you seen that? No, Sandra Bullock and no. oh my god you need to watch it I'm thinking like Mary Poppins I don't know why when you said that maybe the practically perfect in every way no I'm I think Mary Poppins was a witch you know what it is yeah I mean, she's definitely a witch but a practical witch uses magic to get even mundane work done magic and daily routine so that's totally Mary Poppins that is Mary Poppins yeah, yeah exactly so I love that idea of using magic to like get your filing done or you know do the recycling <laughs> sea witch a bit of a misleading term because it's basically like a water witch more, like strong ties to water, uses water in their practice, very drawn to water, lakes, oceans, ponds. So mm. not just the secular witch. Again, you can be a secular witch or a non-secular witch and come into some several of these categories. A secular witch is definitely us because we view magic, witchcraft, whatever, outside of religion. It's not a religion to us. We don't feel like it's our religion because you do have religious witches. You have Christian witches, believe it or not. And you have things like Wiccans. They have like their version of the Bible. They have ceremonies. They have a structure. They have hierarchy. They have covens, so forth. What can I um, say is that part of the coven? Yeah. Coven seems like a very serious thing that you have to be sworn into and pass tests. definitely and some of them are like that some of them may be more informal some of them can be a whatsapp group chat yes (laughs) (laughs) so um yeah but secular witches like i said it's it's not it can be applied to any of these different types of witches but magic is not a religion shadow witch and so i read this and i was like oh my god this is us too fuck's sake it's getting ridiculous we're like 800 types of witches all in one and we don't even identify as witches no that's <laughs> but, the problem isn't it we're right. about 80 percent of this list but we won't call ourselves a witch but right. we might need to just come out of the broom closet you know tracy yeah broom closet right. like that. <laughs> so a shadow witch practices magic that uncovers blocks a shadow witch will look at emotional trauma We'll look at the shadow side of their characteristics. And again, like we're going to do an episode on this. It's very tied with a lot of um, early psychology, um, you know, Jung and Freud, looking at the dark, darker side of our personality. It has a strong association with lunar work and water energy. So, this yeah. is yay. I kind of feel like this is both of us because we're both constantly on the mission of self-awareness even if it involves Mm. looking at like the painful side right Mm. a shadow witch tends to be empathic compassionate and forgiving i think that's definitely both of us Mm self-care is a priority we do magic alone curious about ourselves and why we do stuff yes right yeah so i i definitely think we've got a bit of this in us for sure The next one is, again, something that can be applied to all these different types of witches. It's a solitary witch. That's not to mean you don't have any friends. It just means that you practice alone rather than in a coven. Spirit witch, again, works with spirits. Um, And then this one, stitch witch. (gasps) Is that what I think it means? What the fuck? I didn't even know this was a thing. It is us, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. That's my notes on this. Uses fabrics and risen, ribbons and yarns and crafty stuff. No. Quite often does not magic. And I was like, well, I don't do not magic. But then I no. read further. Because you, you didn't know it was a thing, though. I bet you will have a look listen now. Listen to this. You do a lot of sewing. You make a lot of things with your sewing machine, your cool fabrics and so forth. Face masks and, <laughs> you know, you make patches, eyeglass cases, yeah. um, pouches and all sorts of stuff. I do a lot of embroidery, cross stitch and so forth. So listen to this. We do these projects with intentions in mind. I don't like to do a cross stitch unless I know who it's for. And I think about them while I'm doing it. And while I'm doing it, it's undoubtedly someone I love because I'm making them a cross stitch. Oh. I think about them. I wish them happiness while I'm doing it. Oh, and I'm safety th- and is love. There an actual cross of the stitch, the magical knot. That you're so, doing? yeah, that is actually not magic. Oh. It's like when I'm doing my cross stitch, I'm obsessed with the person. I'm thinking about them constantly. And then... um, Hey, how was your obsession with me before Christmas then? Because you made me 12. I know. So someone who's a stitch witch, 
feels like they can't make something unless they know specifically who it's for. Obviously, there's exceptions, but it's only special if you know who it's for and you're making it with someone in mind. You love color and you love seeing your loved one's face when you give them a present you made. Oh, that's very yay. Right? Very but that's yay. you too, isn't it? Do you, do you... Yeah, I guess it used, I think it used to be before I started doing it for business. I, I, I mean, obviously... You talk about like losing your creativity goals, don't you? Like, but it started off that way. Yeah. Well, I see, what are we going to have... do when people ask us which witch we are? Because it's like a massive well, list. Here. Do you want me to print off another one of this list? And <laughs> you can I'm writing it. them down. What kind of witch are you? Here's the list. Um, to me, this reminds me of a witch is a doctor. And then a doctor has lots of different avenues of medicine that they can further yeah. develop their skills on. And so if you imagine like a witch is a GP that specializes in everything, but then a surgeon or a specialist doctor may choose an avenue of choice. Or like a chef, you know how like you've got chefs who are probably in tune with cooking a lot of different types of meals, but they'll have their specialty like Asian cuisine or vegetarian yeah. cuisine, you know? So it's not that like they can't do the other or they don't associate. It's and just they have a special yeah. avenue. And then you have the fusion chefs, which is probably what we would be. Fusion witches. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what we need to call ourselves. Fusion wishes. Keep that yeah. in mind. Remember that we thought of that. I didn't down. Okay, so the next one is a sun witch. I've put, how is this different to astrology, which, well, they focus on solar energy rather than astrology. So it's not so much thinking about the sun signs. It's more literally the sun using the sun in self-care practice. I've put here, oh my God, this is me too. Strong with fire energy. I think I've definitely got that. Morning person, drained on cloudy days, loves vacationing to warmer places. I've lived here in the UK since I was seven, which is like 30 years now. I only visited Scotland for the first time three, four years ago because I always go somewhere warmer. So if you're a sun witch, if you love the warmth of the sun on your skin. Well, that's definitely not me. I feel like I shrivel at sunlight. That's it. I I read that and I think, isn't that everyone? But it isn't, is it? No, no. Yeah. Okay, this one I loved, right? Tech witch. Here she is, the tech witch. What does a tech witch do? I'm right, so because interested. we talked about how all of these terms and all of these practices, they evolve over time. So we have moon apps on our phone, right? Yeah. We go online to read our astrology, our, our horoscopes for the day. We join witchy groups on Facebook. So this is us as well. You might think of it, oh, I'm not tech inclined, but we are, <laughs> you know? Yeah, again, it's taking a look of yourself on the outside. Do you right? do this? Yeah. So it's, So obviously this is newer, but there's a long history of witches being ahead of the game in terms of technological developments and all kinds of developments. You know, that's why they're accused of witchcraft, because they're doing stuff that people don't fully understand yet. So using the web, using electronics, using digital stuff in their magic. So, for example, having a lunar podcast to share knowledge about the moon, you know, blogs to share your knowledge. I mean, we Google most of the research of this podcast from witches that write stuff online, you know spreadsheets Dee's eyes just lit up there like I've not seen in ages well because I put most of the research I do into spreadsheets I've put here now is the point where I've made a comment what the fuck I'm all of these witches (laughs) (laughs) and do you remember when I mentioned we did this quiz online a survey about how people identified themselves as and what they wanted to learn more about so one of the one of the ways that a tech witch might operate is with online forms. Really? That was all you. You're a tech witch. Ooh. Emails used to send out spells and intentions. We do that literally every full moon and new moon. Instagramming, all of your stuff yeah. as well. Tarot, astrology apps. We also very often put our, I know I do, we put all our research online, like on Word documents. A lot of people have their journals online, literally online and shared with the world in terms of blogs. All of our research for these different podcast episodes, we keep them in our G drive, don't we? So we're using technology for our witchy woo-woo practices. Pinterest boards. Yeah. We do that. (laughs) And then the thing that made me laugh so much because I did not know it was a thing and now it's my favorite thing in the world emoji spells what is I wish I'm going to describe Tracy's face she just gasped her eyes (laughs) emoji spells are exactly what you think they are 
casting a smell by by making a series of emojis. So I obviously had to Google. Basically, if you Google emoji spells, a bunch of websites come up with emoji yeah. spells. So I went to emoji spells for you with the number four and the letter U dot Tumblr dot com. Oh, do you see, now I don't know whether this is a really good thing or a really awful thing. I don't know, but I love it either way. <laughs> I'm totally fucking trying this. It seems super easy. I mean, it's a spell that you can make up on your own on the sofa. When I looked at this, I was like, fuck, maybe we are accidentally casting emoji I was wondering if I've sent any to anyone. So, I have done a thing of... <laughs> oh, so analytical with everything. My twin flame sent me an emoji and I Googled, even though it's very clear what that emoji meant, I Googled yeah. possible other meanings. So, like, for example, if you go to this emoji spells for you.tumblr.com, this person has a list of different emoji spells for different purposes. So I presume you want to send it to who you want to aim it at. Or if it's for you, I guess you just put it in your, your phone and just have it so you can see it, maybe? Like Ooh. a mantra? Just text yourself. You can text yeah. yourself. So, for example, there's an emoji spell for increased wealth and business prosperity for artists. It involves Ooh. an up arrow. A light bulb, it looks like a painter emoji, a girl with a beret and a palette of paint and a paintbrush, a separate paintbrush, a money bag, a dollar sign, a money bag, the Mona Lisa, a paint palette, um, an in tray, and an up arrow. <laughs> Trying so hard not to laugh, Dee, in case anyone's real um, belief is this. That has to be made up. I'm, I, I'm very open-minded to a lot of stuff. <laughs> is this one step too far for this you? This is one step too far. You've, now, you see, if someone sent it to me, I wouldn't say no. But Okay, well. so to attract miracles and positive experiences, up arrow, very smiley face, thumbs up, heart with the, um, like the light flicker, sun, um, branch, torch, dove, present, very smiley face, up arrow. I didn't even know I had those emojis on my phone. Did you, dear? It would take no. me hours to do that. I know. That's what I was thinking. I don't even know what some of them are, let alone. Maybe the emoji spells is a step too far for us. But a lot of this, I think, applies to a lot of us because we're so used to using technology for everything, right? I mean, yeah. the other stuff, the sending the emails with the spells and intentions and stuff, that's what we base most mm. of our business on. People who are tech witches quite often create witchy movements through social media and the internet. What have we done if not that? Movements. Yeah, things evolve. So in the future, maybe there'll be robot witches. Who knows? Maybe our WhatsApp mm. group is a coven, you know? Yeah. People that are tech witches are quite often trendsetters because they're constantly thinking of the latest developments. Yeah, I just thought that was super interesting. interesting. I would never have known that there was a category called tech witch. No. But I totally am on board with the fact that a lot of people use technology in their practice in some way. Yeah. And sharing their practice, sharing their knowledge, interacting with others of similar belief. I mean, it does make me sad the thought of just using a computer to get all of your spells or all of your information when you can just stuff the old spell book that's yes. been in the family for centuries and turn the yellow pages. But then that doesn't exist anyway in this modern world. So, yeah, And there's some beautiful things about it, being able to reach people much further and wider than exactly. you would without technology. Evolving with a world that's changing, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think there's definitely some really positive elements to take from that. Thunder witch, witches that love storms, thunderstorms, um, collect rainwater for cooking. Traditional witch, Practicing traditional methods, probably not casting emoji smells. <laughs> yeah. Urban witch. So we talked a little bit about urbanization of society and how that pulls a lot of people away from nature and has made a lot of it. I mean, I don't know how to grow my own food and I couldn't forage to save my life. I would, I would definitely forage the wrong <laughs> fungus and have those fits and convulsions and end up in some Salem witch trial, Twickenham oh. witch trial, you know? <laughs> A lot of witches under this banner of urban witch have managed to find unconventional ways to find this affinity with nature. So having window gardens, for example, yeah. Wicca, which is one that I'm not going to go very much into because there's a lot to talk about. And maybe we make a separate episode about that in particular. Mm. But Wicca is a, a modern religion by religion standards. 
it's structured, it's hierarchical. So you have people higher up, there's ceremonies, there's inductions, investitures, whatever you want to use the word to, you know, to join them. There are specific teachings and books, holy books and so forth. So for some people, that is the route that they practice their witchcraft. So I'm going to end because this was quite a lot, but I'm going to end on magic versus magic. Is this magic with a K versus yeah. with a C? If you use magic versus magic with a K, it's because you believe that magic without the K is the sort of entertainment side. It's what magicians do, you know, pulling rabbits out of hats. Oh. And magic with a K is the magic you practice in witchcraft. It's quite often associated with Wicca. So that's it. That's that's what I've got for witches. It was so much fun to read about. Goodness Definitely. Me. My brain is full. I've learned so much. How do you feel after hearing that list? Um, I feel like that was massive therapy, actually. A bit of self-reflection. And the old Tracy would have been panicking to try and define my name and trying to choose one. Pick one. But actually, I think that list sums up spirituality. Is like, just come with it do what feels right with your intuition. The lesson I'm going to take away from this is that it doesn't really fucking matter. And there we go. I like that too. (laughs) We would love to hear your coming out of the broom closet stories, right? Yes. So please Please tell us. We would love to hear how you identify yourself, how that identification came about, whether you're like us and just don't really know, whether you're whether you're okay with not knowing, whether it bothers you. Yeah. Tell us everything. You know where to find us. Please like, share, follow, subscribe, whatever the words are on whatever podcast platform you're listening to us on. It really helps us get out there further. Oh, well, thank you everyone for listening. Thanks, Dee. Love learning about all the different witches and the history of such an important part of our history. Take care. See you next time. Bye. 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 If you enjoyed that and you want more from us, why don't you head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash we knew the moon and check out some bonus content. Also, if you want to stay up to date, you can follow us on our Facebook page at we.new.the.moon. If you could leave us a review on our Facebook page, that would mean a lot. Our Instagram handle is the same as our Facebook at we.new.the.moon. We are on Twitter at we knew the moon one. And we are also on Pinterest. Just search for We Knew the Moon. Finally, if you want lots more fun, moon info and all things spiritual, plus our lovely shop, please visit our website, weknewthemoon.co.uk. 